Should you buy an ROG Ally or stick with the Steam Deck? How's it going everyone? Welcome to Deck Ready and the end of the first week or so of the ROG Ally being out in the wild. I got mine a couple of days before it came out thanks to my friends at Xbox and Asus and I've been putting in a ton of time with it over the past week or so. Back when this thing was announced at the beginning of April, I did a video here on the channel where I talked about my first impressions on the thing and honestly they were pretty positive. I liked the performance, I liked the form factor, I liked the 1080p screen, but overall it felt like it was missing something and I felt like if I picked one up, I would really just default pretty quickly back to my Steam Deck. And now that I've had this for about a week, that is definitely the case. Before I get into the sort of negative aspect of this video and talk about why I ultimately am still daily driving a Steam Deck instead of the ROG Ally, I want to talk about the positives because I am largely very positive on a lot of this device. First of all, I'm a little surprised at how much criticism I've seen of the actual hardware itself. I've seen people going as far as to say it feels cheap and I could not disagree more. This thing feels really good in the hand. The only gripes I have with it are that it's a little bit sharp on the sides, so it kind of digs into your hand after a few hours of gaming. And then also the triggers and thumbsticks are just a little bit too floaty for my taste. Like I like that they made the thumbsticks pretty tall because that makes this device feel like an actual controller in your hands. But I think a downside there is that the ring around the joystick is pretty small, so it feels like they don't have a ton of travel. Other than that, I don't really have a lot of issues with this hardware. The fan is extremely quiet even when it's in turbo mode, which obviously when the Steam Deck came out, that was a huge point of criticism that Valve was using two different fans and when they would spin up, one was louder than the other. And even if you got the more quiet fan, you can still definitely hear it when it spins up on the Steam Deck. And it got to the point where they had to release a firmware update that made it so the fans kick in less often and the Steam Deck as a whole runs a little bit hotter. The ROG Ally out of the box doesn't have that issue because even when it's on full blast, the fan is relatively silent. Another point of criticism I've seen that I don't really have issue with is the buttons feeling mushy. Like yes, they are a little bit mushier than what you'd have on the Steam Deck, but I've never run into any issues in my extensive time playing on this thing where I was getting double inputs or phantom inputs or just getting no inputs at all. Every time I hit the button, I got the intended effect out of it and it just kind of feels nice pushing on them. I don't know why, it's just like obviously up to personal preference. And I do like the jewel look and how big they are compared to the buttons on the Steam Deck because the B button on the Steam Deck can stick after a while because it's sort of rounded off. Whereas on this thing, it's like an Xbox controller. They're not as spread out as they are in an Xbox controller, but they're totally flat across the top of the ally. So I think they did a good job with the button, but that could change over time. And then we got to talk about the speakers because I can't believe I'm saying this, but somehow Asus figured out how to not only match the Steam Deck's incredible speaker quality, but in some ways they've exceeded it. The ROG ally gets a little bit louder in my testing than the Steam Deck, and it's also a lot punchier in certain scenarios to the point where when I was playing music off of Apple Music and YouTube, I actually enjoyed the experience of listening to this thing. Now, I'm not going to go and make this my main music playing device. I prefer my MacBook or my iPad or my iPhone over a handheld gaming PC, but that's just a good example I could think of to show how good the speakers are on the Ally. But that's just a cool and easy way that people can use to test the speakers between the two devices if they have both. So if you do have both, put them side by side, pull up a song on YouTube and play and pause it on both devices. And I think you'll be surprised at how good the speakers are in the Ally. And then finally, the quality on the screen is absolutely phenomenal. We'll talk about this more in a little bit, but Asus has an Armory Crate app that allows you to also pull up a sort of quick access menu at any time. You can customize that menu and add a bunch of different features to it or remove them and just keep the ones you use all the time in there. It's really customizable, which is great. And they have a little switch in there that'll let you swap it from 1080p to 720p whenever you want. I've done that on the desktop. I've done that in game. I've done it tons of times based on the game I'm playing playing because some games just run a lot better at 720p and I have never had an issue switching between 720 and 1080. Now when you switch to 720, I think I would take the Steam Deck screen over this one because the Steam Deck screen is 800p so the bezels look smaller because of that 16 by 10 aspect ratio but if I can play a game at 1080p and better settings on the ROG Ally, I think I would choose that over the Steam Deck just because this screen is bright, it's colorful and at 1080p this small 7 inch form factor looks 
looks incredible. This video is sponsored by DealDash. DealDash is an auction site that's been around for the last 15 years, and you can find thousands of auctions happening every day. They have brand new items up for bidding, and the deals people have scored are absolutely phenomenal. We're talking about an iPad mini going for $13.34, or an Xbox Series X going for just 45 bucks. After signing up, you'll need to purchase a bid pack, and you can get 400 bids for $30. Each bid raises the price by a penny, and the auction timer counts down by 10 seconds, and if no one bids within that time, time frame, you win. DealDash has tons of crazy items up for grabs. Someone was actually able to get a brand new Jeep for $1,875. And check this out, a Nintendo Switch went for just 22 bucks. If you ran out of bids and didn't win, DealDash also has you covered with a buy it now feature. You can purchase the item at a fixed price and then in return, they'll put the bids right back into your account. It's a win-win. DealDash might not be for everyone though. Some auctions can take up to days to actually complete. Also, they only ship within the United States and Canada. But if you enjoy the thrill of auctions, you can sign up with my link down in the description and you'll get 100 bonus bids with your first bid pack purchase. And here's the best part. If you don't win anything with the bids you use or you just don't enjoy your experience on DealDash, reach out to them. You'll get your money back, no questions asked on your first bid pack purchase. Huge shout out to DealDash for sponsoring this video. So yeah, from a hardware standpoint i think this thing is a pretty much slam dunk for asus and that's pretty cool the only gripes i have are again this thumbsticks feeling a little too high and not having enough travel and then the fact that this thing is white if you use this thing out in public or your hands are dirty or you just come home and don't wash your hands and you jump right on this thing it's definitely going to get miscolored on the back of the device over time you of course can clean it off and i would recommend people do that just to keep it nice and new feeling but i would have really appreciated a black version of this handheld because that's what I would have bought. I said the same thing about the PlayStation 5. So yeah, if I was recommending this thing purely on hardware, I would say just go pick it up right now if you're interested in it. I think from a hardware perspective, Asus did an incredible job to the point where I wouldn't really worry about waiting for a second gen. I think they did a good job with the first gen. And you knew this was coming. Where the problems really crop up with this thing is software. This thing is running Windows 11 out of the box. And as much as Asus has baked in as much as they could feature wise from steam os 3.0 with their armory crate their version of the quick access menu and the fact that you can launch steam into big picture mode when your pc or your rog ally i mean starts up it's just not really going to get you quite to the quality level that you can expect on the steam deck now i'm not saying steam os 3.0 is perfect it has come a long way since it released but i definitely have some weird little issues with it still like when i restart my steam deck there's always a glitch when the intro animation runs and the sound works fine but it doesn't really make it feel like a premium experience when the steam logo is spinning and it stutters right like it has a single frame stutter like pretty much every pc game these days and that's super frustrating whereas when you start up the rog ally you get that sweet rog sound from these great speakers the animation runs perfectly it looks awesome on the 1080p screen that experience of just starting the thing up feels a lot more premium there but once you get into windows again it really falls apart the first major annoyance that comes along with this ROG Ally is that you are definitely not going to be able to just boot this thing up and start gaming on it. Even if you preload a bunch of games onto an SD card or something like that, you are going to have to go through a lengthy update process with this device. And even that is going to cause problems. There's Windows updates to worry about. There's BIOS updates to worry about. There's ROG Armory Crate updates to worry about. There's Steam updates to worry about. There are just so many updates. And then when you're done with all of that, you still have to go into add or remove programs and get rid of all this bloat like Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Office, Cortana, just all this stuff that's always running on PCs when you install Windows for the first time that you just really don't want. And unfortunately, you can't even trust that those updates are going to make the ROG Ally perform better. They released a BIOS update on day one that brings it from 317 to 319, and the 319 BIOS update dropped performance by around 20 or 30%. It introduced a lot lower 1% lows and also introduced a lot more stuttering in games. And that's annoying and frustrating for a lot of reasons, but it's also super irritating that if you're not paying attention, it'll just automatically update your BIOS when the computer restarts, which if you're updating Windows, it loves to automatically restart to install updates, which is what happened to me. I was on BIOS version 317, I thought I was all good, and then I set the thing down and plugged it into a charger, and it took that as a go-ahead to restart to install a Windows update, and then I looked off my phone and it was halfway through a BIOS update, which, I 
I'm, I'm not that crazy, right? Like I'm not gonna shut down the thing while the BIOS are updating. And yes, you can go in and downgrade the BIOS back to 317, but that's a lot of work that I don't really want to do, which is a huge thing that pushed me back to the Steam Deck. I was able to just pick that thing up, start up Marvel's Midnight Suns, and I played it in the park all day on Saturday, and it was an excellent experience. Whereas I got so frustrated dealing with this BIOS update and all that stuff that I was like, look, I'm just gonna let this thing sit here, update Windows, update everything it needs to update, and then I'll come back to it tomorrow or when I have time and just hope everything worked out as planned. And then I've also just had a lot of minor issues that sort of stacked up on top of each other and didn't really make the intro experience feel very premium. So thankfully they have it set up out of the box. So when you're on the desktop, the right stick controls the mouse and then RB is left click and then right trigger is right click. Sorry, that's like kind of confusing. When it works, it's awesome, but unfortunately it doesn't work all the time. So one area where it almost never works for me is in Steam. I know it's probably down to Steam input or something like that, but I don't wanna have an issue where I make a change with Steam on the ROG Ally and then it automatically syncs that setting with my Windows PC. I also just personally don't know what setting to change to make the ROG Ally uh, mouse cursor work within Steam. So when Steam is open, it's a full touch or controller interface. So I switched it to open up in big picture. Now I use the controller interface, but they don't have an Xbox button assigned on the ROG Ally. So I had to go do that myself to be able to pull up the Steam menu without touching the little Xbox button logo in the bottom left corner. So it's like multiple levels of frustration there. And then if you contrast that experience with the Steam Deck, thanks to the fact that it has trackpads and Steam kind of takes over when you start up desktop mode, I think overall the experience of using SteamOS's desktop is a lot easier on a handheld than using Windows 11 on a handheld with the ROG Ally. I don't know why, I just prefer it. And that's why I'm really excited when they release SteamOS 3.0 finally uh, to install it on my PC because it also gets rid of common Windows problems that the ROG Ally experiences like stuttering in a ton of games. But I don't wanna be all doom and gloom with the Ally because once I actually get into certain games, I have a ton of fun with this thing. The main game I was playing for the first few days was Diablo 4. Now running it at 720p medium settings and then I set FSR to quality, you can get a pretty much locked 60 FPS both in towns and out in the wild and in dungeons. Even when you're using VFX heavy spells and things like that and attacks, it still will hold a largely uh, 60 FPS across the board. But it just doesn't look very good on the Steam Deck screen to me. So what I've done is go to the high preset and then I turned on FSR and set it to balanced. I think it works fine at 30 FPS without any FSR on, but I got just a little bit more battery life with FSR on. And I honestly think it looks really good in Diablo 4, despite looking not so great in a lot of other games. So at the end of the day, while yes, I can get a 60 FPS experience out of the ROG Ally with Diablo 4, the reason I ended up just switching back to the Steam Deck is because it crashes constantly. All weekend, I would be in a dungeon, I would be in the overworld, and anytime someone would run up to me and either emote or do a spell of their own, like a heavy VFX uh, attack, it would just crash the game and kind of force restart the ROG Ally. And then with the ROG Ally, I don't know if this was because I was running in turbo mode with the thing plugged in, but over time, I noticed performance getting worse, and that is something that rarely, if ever, happens on the Steam Deck, and I think that's really because Valve limits the TDP to a lot lower than what you're able to get to on the ROG Ally, which I'm pretty sure is like 45 watts if you're plugged in and you have turbo boost mode on. So yeah, for me personally, someone who favors frame rate consistency and the game not crashing or having performance degrade over time, Diablo 4, clear winner on the Steam Deck. Even though it's running at lower FPS, I am having a great time running it at 800p on that screen. And then shockingly, I was at the Xbox Showcase with my friend Ray, who runs Xbox Ready over the last weekend. And when they announced Starfield, I was like, man, Fallout 4 is one of my favorite games ever. I wonder if you can get it running with mods on the Steam Deck. So I downloaded the game as you would on Steam. And then I found out there's a mod organizer for Fallout 4 on Steam Deck that's very similar to the Nexus Mod Manager and honestly works very similarly. And so what it does is make it so that when you launch Fallout 4, it launches the Mod Manager instead 
and then you can turn on your mods or turn them off, launch the game. And what I was able to do is run it at 800p high settings at a completely locked 30 frames per second. So I went and did the same thing over on the ROG Ally. I ended up using Nexus Mod Manager and you can get a 60 FPS experience out of Fallout 4 on the ROG Ally, but it fluctuates. When you get into cities, you get into heavily populated areas, you're gonna see it dropping to around 50 FPS. And then the positive there is that the ROG Ally screen is adaptive. So if you're really sensitive to it, like I am, you're gonna notice it, but most people won't. Still, I really just like the Steam Deck and how it feels in my hand and how I have everything set up there. So even though it runs better on the ROG Ally and it's like a little bit easier to set up with mods on the Ally, I again, just sort of started gravitating towards my Steam Deck because I knew it was already ready to go. And then the one time I grabbed my ROG Ally to take it down to the park where I like playing games, I got there, I turned it on, and then I flipped up the screen and it was like, you need to restart for this Windows update. I restart, I log back in, and then it's like, you need to download another update to play this game. You can't play Fallout 4 in offline mode unless you launch it in online mode. So yeah, that was my fault. That's a Steam issue. It's just a frustration that I don't really get on the Steam Deck. So I'm glad I brought that with me as well. And then this is where the irony sets in with the whole conversation around the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck. The one game, the one single game that I was so excited to play on the ROG Ally was of course Destiny 2 because since the Steam Deck came out, that's all I've been begging for is the ability to play Destiny 2 on SteamOS. Bungie just ignores people and doesn't listen to their fans on pretty much anything. So they're never gonna do it, it seems. And I was excited to play Destiny 2 on the Ally. I tried it out in my impressions video. It ran really well, 1080p, medium settings, totally locked 30, even on Neo Muna where it's really hard to hold a solid frame right there. I'm really happy with those settings. Unfortunately, I don't like this season. Diablo just came out. I need a Destiny break. So the one game that I was so excited to really dig into on a handheld, I'm just not into right now. And it, uh, that'll change. I'm sure I'll be more into it with the next season, going into the fall and the whole Final Shape expansion and everything like that. But for now, the, the preferable experience for me is Diablo 4 on the Steam Deck. So the other game I wanted to play on the ROG Ally, Dead by Daylight, also just got an update to work fine for the Steam Deck. So yeah, if you already have a Steam Deck, I really think you should just stick with it. The ROG Ally does perform better for sure in a lot of scenarios. I would really say the vast majority of scenarios in terms of raw settings than the Steam Deck. But at the end of the day, I think the overall user experience is the perfect middle ground between a hardcore PC and a game console. And I think that's why the Steam Deck has taken off as much as it has. And look, the Steam Deck battery life is not great. I wouldn't even call it good. It's amazing compared to what you get running at the higher performance profiles out of the ROG Ally. Like you can kill the battery on this thing in like 45 minutes if you're not careful. And on the Steam Deck, you'll at least get an hour or an hour and a half out of it if you're taxing it to the max. And look, if you're someone who can't decide between the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck, first of all, I'm gonna say super biased, right? Like this channel's called Deck Ready. I love the Steam Deck. I would even call myself a Steam Deck fanboy. So you gotta keep all of that in mind. But I think even if I was more objective on this stuff and I was a totally just like handheld PC guy, I would still choose the Steam Deck at the end of the day, just because the experience is a lot better and you can get the consistency in games that you can get on the Ally. You might just have to lock the game at 30 FPS instead of 40 or 60. And that is a trade-off that's totally worth it for that better user experience. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the ROG Ally versus the Steam Deck. I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. And remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.